Hello and welcome back to Simply Solo Playthrough. We are here again with another top five video. And not everyone's top fives are going to come out to be the same. But this one is probably my most interesting one to do, in my humble opinion. And that is, what are you going to take on an airplane? You're going to have to be cooped up. We're going to assume your coach seat, because that's how I fly. And that's how most people fly. You're not going to bring something like Imperial Assault, because all you have is a 15-inch by 9-inch area. That's it. No more. Here's our edge. This is this is it. That's it. 15 inches by 9 inches. So, and you have problems. Are you going to play one deck dungeon? A great fun game. It's a super great game, but it's got a ton of dice. A ton of markers and a ton of everything. So, it's not exactly the nicest, easiest game to play. On an airplane. Same thing with Hostage Negotiator. One of my top recommended games. It's not something you're going to want to play. On an airplane. Because things move and change. You know. Tiny Epic Galaxy is one of those. You know it could work. It, it is small enough. You could use. Ultra Tiny Epic. Galaxy. So it's even smaller. And this would probably be far more recommended. But one of the problems is, is you don't have the box. Plus, let's be honest, you're rolling dice a lot. And I would find that very annoying if someone behind me is rolling dice for seven hours on a flight to Europe. So what's our top five? Okay, number five is the one... It's the top recommendation. Palm Island. I mean, why not? You play the game in your hand. You don't even have to put down a card. You don't have to worry about the 15 inch by 9 inch limitation. And that's as easy as it gets. And that's your that's almost everyone's top recommendation is Palm Island. Because it, it's small, fits in your hand. And is, it's a great game. But it does get boring after a while. Um, I've played in excess of probably 300 rounds of Palm Island. And while I do enjoy it, it can get boring after a while. So another thing that's right along the same idea is Main's Quest. Maiden's Quest, you are playing a Maiden. And there's a whole bunch of them. And you have been captured into the castle. And you need to get out. And you have different people that you're going out and fighting. And you have, let's see, you have this. And you have your dress, wherever that's at. Uh, this is partly played game, <laughs> so it's not set up right. So you have different things that are going to be happening. And you have, of course, a um, a boss that you have to go and fight. The nice thing about this game is you can set up two two games in advance. And you're ready to go. Then you can go ahead and resort. You've got the box to deal with putting things down. And moving on, you can do a two-person variant. Uh, I've never played the two-person variant, but there is a two-person variant. And you end up with, you know, all these bosses that you can go on ahead and have uh, differing experiences with. And you can play with differing cards. So, different um, heroes. And your maiden can have different dresses and you're all set up you're all ready to go this is my favorite game that's just handheld it beats palm island i love this over palm island my problem with this is it uses a weird size of card and the printing isn't the best i really wish whiz kids would release a print and play version of maiden's quest 
uh, because I could make a really good version of Maiden's Quest. Now, in this small area that we have, you could play something like Dungeon Brawler, which is a small... Um, there's a whole bunch of these that you can lay out cards. The problem is that you're going to have is you're still going to have to work within the area. So you're going to have to move stuff up and around and know how to arrange. And I have several of these kinds of games where you can just go on ahead, set up your dungeon, and just play. I generally play like three back, and uh, you don't have to exit. So in that case, you could even play something like Bag of Dungeon, which, again, you're back to dice, but it's not so bad. Uh, one of the other things that you can play are, of course, deck builders. And Tom Cleaver's Valley of the Kings is one of the best. When I bought these games, they were all on the boxes weren't there. Uh, so I adapted. Uh, great game. It has online. You can have a dummy player. And I have a couple playthroughs of this, so it's really kind of nice. And it's a deck builder, and you can use the box to help with um, managing your discards and everything. So that would be one of the advantages of Valley of the Kings and other uh, deck builders. Not to mention any particular names, but smaller deck builders will allow you to go on ahead and play on an airplane in a 15 by 9 area. One of the things I would probably recommend if I was going, when I uh, fly to Europe later on, I'm going to probably uh, cut out a 15 by 9 pad. So I have a something that will grip the cards so when I'm playing, I can just, I don't have to worry about card sliding. But small deck builders are, in my humble opinion, a really good one. So you have something like Shards of Infinity uh, would also work. Problem with Shards of Infinity is it can get laid out a lot. So I would suggest that you practice before you go on a long plane flight. <laughs> the last one is is another favorite game of mine, and that is Maquis. And you're going to say, Maquis, that's kind of out, and you've got all those pieces. That's true, and you have this board. Except what you can do is get the print-and-play version, print it out on an 8.5 by 11 uh, sticker, which they do sell, Avery sells them, and they sell them at Walmart and other places. Cut it in half-ish. And put it in here. And that would help you manage all of your little parts. Uh, so that's something else that you can do. And that this is our last game. Um, this is our fifth game. And this would be a really, I think, a good one to take on. An area where you have a linen. Make sure that you take out the inserts. Because you're not going to need the inserts when you play. And most of this, like I said, if you have a 15 by 9 cutout of a, uh, a play mat, just get a cheap play mat, cut it out. And I would probably even, assuming this was it, I'd probably even cut something right down the center, but not all the way through, so it would fold in half. And that can easily be put into a backpack. Or something with all your other games. So these are my suggestions. We've got Maquis. Which you're going to go ahead and play as a traditional board game. And you play inside the box. You have deck builders. Of one form or another. Because I like deck builders. Let's be honest. I really truly do. Now I'm not going to bring Alien. Or some of my other favorites. But that's okay. You can do something if you can play well within management um, of a, s a small dungeon. 
as long as you can go on ahead and manage the space. And again, I practiced that before you leave. And of course, the two that are the handheld games, Palm Island and Maiden Quest. And these are these are the, the two that are going to be in your hand without any problem. And they're both great games. Maiden Quest is probably a little more difficult to find. But it's still a great game. So thank you. Please make sure that you like and subscribe. And come back later. And we'll be back with another episode. Please like and subscribe.